Do you see how it's starting to swing? It's starting to feel like real music. That's what I love about doing this sort of thing. Hi, this is Sean. In this lesson, we're going to look at how to improvise and practice improvisation phrases over two chords or over chord changes that can seem really tricky because they're just not similar at all. Please do hit like on this video. It's really helping us to grow so I can do more of this for you. And do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content I upload. And with that, I'm ready to begin. So looking here, this is out of nowhere. And you can see right at the beginning, we've got this G going to a B flat minor to E flat seven. So quite tricky to make those transitions. And then straight after that, we're back out to G again. So how would we practice that and get fluent at it? Now, improvisation is not an arrangement. Zoom in on bits that we're not good at or that we need work on. Get good at those because it translates to all the other stuff as well. First things first, the kind of thing I learned from Barry Harris was to just drill scales over the whole tune, but certainly over areas like this. And we would take root to seventh on a G major for that G major seven. Root to seventh and back. Now with newer players, they normally get lost where the bar lines are. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. When I ask students to do this, they'll often go one and two and three and four. And, and they think the chord comes at the end or something like that. Be aware of where those bar lines are, where the measures are, okay? We would always drill scales root to seventh and back. Rhythmically, it figures out better and gives you more options as we shall see. That's covered our first two bars. The next two bars are a two five progression. B flat minor to E flat seven is a two five progression in the key of A flat. What we do with two fives is we just treat them as five. So if it's B flat minor seven to E flat seven, the E flat seven is the five. We take the E flat seven scale. Has the same notes as A flat major, but it will outline different tension and release notes. In other words, it has different notes on the beat compared to the A-flat major scale, which will have these notes on the beat, which are not going to outline the same things, okay? So I can't go into too much detail in the time we have for this, but that's how we do it. So now we're going to drill the G major scale up and down, the E-flat 7 scale up and down before we start building phrases. This is how we'll do it. Let's just grab that much. Here goes. not doing anything fancy with the chords or anything like that except do notice that when I start on the G major scale I'm playing a six chord not a major seventh why because six goes better against the root than the major seventh will okay so I do that when I'm drilling scales the other thing we would do in Barry Harris classes a lot would be to drill these scales from their thirds from their fifths from their sevenths from all the chord notes so when we went root it was up to seven. One, I like to think of them as one short of an octave. So when we drill from the third, I can play my G major seven again, that'll be fine against the third. That will go up to two and back down to three, right? When we drill from the fifth, it will be five up to four, four of G. And then when we drill from seven, up to six and back down. So just doing that gives you a ton of freedom, actually. So let me just drill them from each point. Here goes. Okay, here's root. Root of E flat seven. Thirds. Third of E flat seven. Fifths. Sevenths. And that way you just start to feel. I was playing scales before I met Barry Harris. Wasn't using them all the same way, for sure. But wasn't drilling them in time over tunes, and I felt that gave me a ton more freedom because suddenly the notes that are correct in inverted commas, they just 
appear in my playing a lot more than if I wasn't drilling scales. Now we were doing them pretty quick in the class. You might find what I'm doing quick if you're just getting started with this stuff and that's fine. Slow down to a tempo where you can really manage it. Okay, now what I'm going to do is start to drill some joins. So I'm going to begin on my second bar just so I've got one bar of a scale and I'm going to join it to the next scale. So stuff like this, if I go G major, one, two, three, four, let's pick a number, one, three, five, or seven. So let's have three. And I'll be doing this from the second bar. So one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now I'm just gonna keep running the scale. I'm not, I'm not doing an up and down. I'm just gonna keep running and find the closest scale note for E flat seven. One and two and three and four and one could be there or it could have been here as well, right? So you've got to know those scales and getting in and out of them. And then I'll just drill the other one down, nothing fancy. This is what I mean. Here we go. Something like that. Then you find that you can cut bits off. You don't have to play the whole scale down. So I'll drill the scale up from the third of G just the way I did. When I come down the E flat seven scale, I'll just cut some of it off. Here it goes. Fine. But you see what's happened that's interesting that I see a lot of the students getting stuck with is they seem to change their phrases every time the chord changes, every time there's a bar line. So it's like, here comes G, here comes more G, here comes B flat minor, here comes E flat seven. So the, the, the improv becomes more like this, which we don't want really. very disjointed. So if you can practice ways to make the joins, then it really pays off in your play. Okay, let's pick another number this time. I'll take the fifth of the G major. Again, I will start on the second bar of it and just see where it connects me and then I'll share it with you if something comes out. <laughs> Fine. So that's one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Took the root of the E flat seven scale. Could have taken. I actually particularly like those. I'm gonna go with that. And the reason I like those is it seems really effective when you have what some people call an enclosure. I call a surround note. Barry used to call them surround notes and you are surrounding the note of the next scale with notes of the current scale, right? So we've got one and two and three and four and one. The D flat was surrounded with notes from the G major scale. Okay, let's hear that in time. Two, three, four chord from the fifth. And then of course you can make patterns on the way down. You can make patterns on the way up. So this time what I'll do is I'll use a chord up on the G major second bar and I'll join that to a descending scale of the E flat seven. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two and three and. So I'm starting on the second beat of the bar on the G major. That's another good thing to practice. Really great thing to practice is what happens if you don't start on the first beat all the time? Get off that first beat and practice drilling from the second or the one and or the etc. We'll, we'll try that in a minute. Maybe the one and and the two and. Let's do both. So I'm going to have again from this second bar of G, one, two and three and. This for me, Barry used to call this a chord up in G. In other words, in the G major scale, these are the chords up, right? going through the scale. So I took this one, the third one. So one, two, and three, and down the scale. And this note is an E flat seven scale note, and also a B flat minor seven chord note. So good note to come out on. Let's see how it sounds. Brilliant. 
Now we've got a really nice joint, let's practice doing something from that point. Maybe we go up a chord, up of the B flat minor seventh chord. We're seeing as we're on it, let's see how it sounds. Some of these things will sound great, some okay, some not so great, but that's how we explore. This is composing on the spot when we're really improvising, so that's what we want to practice. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, two and three and four and one. Ah, I changed it, right? That would have been the chord. I just ended on another scale note, quite liked it. Let me do that again. Here we go. Great. Now you see how it's starting to pay off just learning two scales. Whereas many of my students will be saying, but what do you do on the next bit and the next bit? Well, how about the E7 that's coming up? How about get really good at little bits, practice doodling over the rest, zoom into some parts where you really need help. And that I find pays off very well. So I promised you that we would add some half steps or chromatic notes. So this was the, the um, phrase we had. This was on two. So if I want to add a chromatic note on the and of one, I could approach from a half step below this G major note. And that will give me this feel. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and just about made it. <laughs> I'm learning on the spot as we go. Let's try it with the music. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and starting to swing. I love it. Okay, this time I'm going to cut off a note. So what I'll do this time is I won't put the extra note in at the beginning. I'll actually cut the first note off that I played before. So I'll come in on two and, so it'll be like this. It'll make more sense when I do it. you see how it's starting to swing? It's starting to feel like real music. That's what I love about doing this sort of thing. We just began with two scales, just practicing them from different points, joining them together, starting on different points in the scale, starting on different points in the bar. And because we did all that, it's starting to pay us back and give us some cool phrases. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. This is from Out of Nowhere, a tune I really love. And I've been teaching on jazz skills. I've been teaching the analysis of how the harmony works, how to get the right hand chords and melody in there with simple voicings and then advanced voicings and Barry Harris movements as well. So if you're interested in that, head on over to Jazz Skills and consider joining us there as a member. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.